Hi there. Um, we are now sitting with Fiona Davis. And can I have a copy of the book, please? <laughs> uh, Fiona Davis is the author of The Address, which is, if you can see, is a spectacular cover. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And it's published by Dutton. Yes. And Fiona, this is her second book? Yes, that's uh, the second one. First was The Dollhouse. Before we... So I, I'm fascinated by this book, The Address, because it's about an amazing apartment building. That's the inspiration. A lot of it takes place there on 72nd and Central Park West. And those of you who know New York know it's the Dakota. And who lived in the Dakota? People like Lauren Bacall. People like Ro Ro <laughs> Rosemary Clooney, Leonard Bernstein, Connie Chung. Of course, John Lennon, Yoko Ono, um, who else? Harlan Coleman. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. And Roberta Flack, and even Lillian Gish. And that's how far this <laughs> building goes back because it was built in the 1880s, 18, 1884. Amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. And this is, if you haven't been to the Dakota or walked by it or know about it, next time you come to New York, you must walk by. It is. It is a fortress. It's a castle. It's a, a fantasy. It is just the most amazing building. And so I have to ask, how did you get the idea to, uh, and, uh, to, to write about this? It, it, it's, it's, it was so perfect. <laughs> and, you know, what a, what a great idea. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, you know, I, I based the first book around the Barbizon Hotel for Women. And I thought, well, I'll go and find another landmark building, but there's so many, and I was really overwhelmed and nothing was clicking. And I've lived on the Upper West Side for years now, and I was walking along Central Park West, and there it was, and it was, the sun was hitting it, so it was like it was glowing and just saying, pick me. <laughs> and I thought, oh, of course. And, and the minute I saw it, I said, of course, that's exactly where it should be. And the more I researched, the more I realized, oh yeah, this is, this building's full of gold. Talk to me about the history and how you got into it, and were you able to go in and tell? Yeah, tell. so at first um, I did a lot of reading about it. There's been some wonderful books published about it and found out about the history and why it was a real outlier both geographically and just the concept of apartment living for the elite was not popular at that time. So it was a real risk. And um, I didn't know anyone who lived there, and I'd never been inside. But a good friend of mine who's a real estate broker mm. said, hey, Lauren Bacall's apartment's on the market. It's going for $23 million. Let's go. So I threw on my best scarf and a purse, and we showed up and got a wonderful tour. And later I did get to know other people who live in the building and, and got a tour from the, the basement where everything's stored up to the, the old servants' quarters. So as, as a, the more I dug in, the more I got a, access to it. I remember being there once, and for some reason, the apartment I was visiting was very dark. Yes. Are yeah. they all very dark? Was her apartment dark? Yeah, it's all that dark mahogany wood. Inside also, in the hallways. Yes, and the banisters, are, the stairways are dark. It's, um, it's unusual. You know, the, the hallways, for example, are really narrow, but the ceilings are really high. So there's this eerie sense of compression mm. as you're walking around. The movie Rosemary's Baby really captured yes. it, although they did not film the movie inside, just the exteriors. But they did capture that. It's a little claustrophobic. The hallways, yes, I remember that about that film. Yeah. Um, so the story is about two women, really. Um, one in present day and one from way back. Yeah. So how did you get that idea and how did they weave together? Well, as I was doing research, I learned that in the 1930s, the building had what's called a lady managerette. And I thought, what a funny term. And I thought, well, maybe I'll kind of pop that back to the 1830s, because I knew I wanted to set it the year it opened, because there's just so much inherent drama in that. And so I do that story from the point of view of a woman named Sarah who comes from London and becomes the, the lady managerette of the Dakota. And then you jump 100 years later to 1985, where an interior decorator who's kind of down on her luck has to strip down one of the apartments of all its period detail and put in shag carpets and, you know, floor-to-ceiling mirrors, much to the horror of, you know, 
of, of the interior decorator. Um, and that's based on a true account of someone who lived there who was Berta Flack, who did something similar. Oh, wow. <laughs> much to the chagrin of the co-op board. So it's all drawn on things that I learned about that's the building great. in real life, but then fictionalizing them into a, a plot. So is this, uh, it's literary fiction, would you say, or contemporary fiction? Yeah, historical fiction. Historical mm -hmm. fiction. Yeah. And um, I guess, yes, because you, you do cover this woman from 100 years ago and, um, and, the, and, the, and, 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 the, and the world of today. Um, it, it seems very cinematic. Is this something that you have out to the film agents in the world? You know, we've got some wonderful inquiries, so who knows. But it sounds like that's pretty common in the book world and mm -hmm. you know the percentage of projects that that actually get filmed but you know hey sure <laughs> it sounds like a, a wonderful one I mean I'm intrigued and this is one that was definitely on my list anyway love the cover love the concept we're talking about the address by Fiona Davis who is also the author of the dollhouse which also sounds very interesting what are you working on now so I'm working on a, the, the next book comes out in August, it's called mm -hmm. The Masterpiece, and oh. it's set at Grand Central Terminal. And again, it was, you know, digging into the history and finding out that in the 1920s, John Singer Sargent, the painter, love him, co-founded an art school in Grand Central called the Grand Central School of Art. It was there for 20 years, it had 900 students a year, it was right under the East Eve, on um, the very top floor. And, um, and I thought, oh, that's a great setting for a book. So it's from the point of view of a female artist who's on the faculty. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then it jumps to 1974, which is when the building was almost about to be demolished. And New York was almost bankrupt, and Jackie O stepped in to help out. I wish she would have saved Penn Station. I know. I know. There's such a beautiful station. Already, I can just imagine what an amazing tale you're going to weave. Again, very cinematic. Absolutely. Yeah, there's John Singer Sargent. Yeah. I didn't even know he spent time in New York. Yeah. Yeah, it was near the end of his life. Um, I always think of Madame X. Of right. Course. Oh, of course. Of course. Well, yes. <laughs> yes. At the shoulder. I know. There's a novel right there for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. This is fantastic. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank we'll look you. forward to that, the masterpiece. And we'd love to cover it on booktrip.com. So I would love that. I'd be honored. Keep us in mind yes. for that. Thank, Thank you so you. much. All right.